Dear students, colleagues, and participants of the International Astronomical Congress, this is Dr. Uhur Givan, and I would like to present my uh, presentation and paper about case study of a mission to Altair. Uh, as you know, uh, interstellar travel has been at the forefront of uh, science uh, for many decades. Uh, many people have been looking, many scientists have been, engineers have been looking for ways to make interstellar travel a possibility rather than just something that science fiction can uh, imagine. So obviously a lot of uh, work is going on and there are many many stars uh, in our solar system which has been uh, uh, studied for such a possibility. Uh, in fact at the end of my slides you can see my website where you can see some of my work that I have done for uh, Proxima Centauri, for Bernard Star, for Wolf 359, for Lalanda 21185. So Altair was one star that I hadn't worked upon, that's why I took this as a, a case study. Now if you look at uh, uh, about Altair, uh, roughly it's about 16.73 light years away from Earth. So that means if you had a spacecraft that could travel at the speed of light, which we know is not plausible as per Einstein uh, relativity equations, it would take roughly 16.8 years traveling at the speed of light from Earth to Altair to reach there. So that's that's a quite a bit of time, as you can imagine. Uh, Altair is a part of a star group known as Alpha Aquilae. Uh, it's 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 the 12th brightest star which can be seen from the Earth. So it's 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 seen almost by everyone. If you if for anybody who wants to see Altair on the northern hemisphere, if you go out at night when you have a clear night skies. If you look toward the east, toward the horizon, uh, you will be able to see Altair uh, coming up uh, at, at uh, early dusk. So, uh, uh, some interesting properties of Altair that I want to uh, talk about. Uh, first of all, uh, as you can see in the slide in the picture, uh, it has a very uh, egg-like shape uh, because it has a very fast rotational velocity of roughly 286 kilometers per second. So because of this fast uh, uh, speed, the, the poles are flattened out into an egg shape in Altair. And the, the picture you see on the slide is an actual representation of uh, how it looks like. Uh, interestingly, Altair is 10.6 uh, times brighter than our sun, uh, has around 1.63 solar radii. It has double the sun's mass, uh, roughly about 1.79 the mass of the sun. Uh, and if, if interesting, it's much younger than our sun. As you know, our sun is around 4.5 billion years. Uh, Altair has an age of 1.2 billion years. Uh, it does emit x-rays. Uh, so uh, though it's bigger than the sun, it's younger than the sun. Uh, so it's an interesting destination. Uh, and it's something visible that we can see in our night skies. Uh, we could use some sort of a nuclear mission uh, to perhaps carry out a, a study of Altair, an unmanned mission with an interstellar probe using 21st century technology. I do have other papers and presentations on how to make this a possibility, how to use nuclear reactors, gas core nuclear reactors, or other forms of advanced space propulsion to get the stars. So I'm going to request you to look up my name and look at more of those other presentations which describe this in detail. But roughly, if you look at a case study of a mission to Altair, like I said, it's 16.75 light years away, uh, using advanced nuclear propulsion technique where we're able to reach uh, velocities around 0 0.4 C that means 40 percent the speed of light roughly it would take close to 45 years for uh, a spacecraft to reach Altair of course because of the semi-relativistic effects the, the the spacecraft itself will feel time differently uh, as you know as it get closer to the speed of light the time passes more quickly uh, aboard the spacecraft so as far as uh, the time aboard the spacecraft is concerned, the mission will feel like 40 years. Of course, if we had the technology to increase this speed from 0.4 C to 0.5 C, 0.6 C, 0.7 C, or even more beyond, obviously, then we would be able to uh, finish this in a shorter period of time, and the spacecraft will feel at a much, much, much faster period of time. So uh, thank you. This is all. This was a short presentation, but you can read my paper, which explains it in more detail. And I have some other papers on other destinations as well. Please go to my website, www.gwen.com or www.aerospacelectures.com. And feel free to contact me if you're interested in this particular research. Thank you. 
and enjoy the remaining of the International Astronomical Congress.